In this series, we've been looking mostly at how Hollow Knight's soundtrack develops themes across multiple pieces of music. The consistency of the soundtrack's atmosphere and use of leitmotifs to reflect specific characters and places is in perfect balance with the wide variety of styles and arrangements that adapt to different parts of the game, making it feel like you're experiencing one huge, living piece of music that grows and evolves around you as you explore the game's world. I want to continue with this tram of thought here, this time diving into arguably the most important musical motif in the game, the Hollow Knight theme. The piece named Hollow Knight on the official soundtrack, and arguably the main theme of the game, is the music that plays over top of the main menu. This might make it seem unimportant, I mean how often do you have to pay attention to a game's menu music after all, but as the very first thing that you encounter when you boot up the game, it serves a vital role in setting the tone for the adventure you're about to embark on. And set the tone it does. The instrumentation of piano and viola duet, coupled with the slow tempo and natural minor harmony, set the stage for an intimate yet solemn, dark yet elegant adventure. Piano and viola are definitely key players throughout the soundtrack, to the point that viola player Timothy Cheel was the only musician hired on to record the music rather than using VSTs. So showcasing them in the game's menu like this foreshadows the instrumental identity of the game's music in general. There are more specific musical elements that foreshadow the soundtrack's tone as well. I've mentioned these before in the series, but the emphasis of the second over a minor chord, as in the first phrase, is a color that is used all over the game's score, and the use of a pedal tone, as in the accompaniment, is frequently employed as an atmospheric technique throughout Hollow Knight's soundtrack. Take a look at this accompaniment figure, with this descending two-note pattern grounded by a pedaled C note on the first beat of every bar. The melody develops out in an extended call and response pattern throughout this theme, but for the purposes of this video the important phrases to remember are the first two. This 1 2 flat 3 2 motif, and the following 1 5 flat 6 5 4 5, especially the first three notes. These work wonderfully as leitmotifs for two reasons. They're simple, and they're recognizable. For a motif to work in multiple musical environments, it needs to be malleable enough to fit into a variety of settings, and to function as a leitmotif, a listener has to be able to recognize it even when it's stretched into a totally different form than initially presented, even if this recognition only happens subconsciously. Our first example of this motif being used in-game comes in the game's intro cinematic, where it's plunked out almost as an afterthought high up on the piano as the player character arrives at Hallownest. Okay, so if this is a leitmotif, then what does it represent? The main character? I mean, it's called Hollow Knight, so does it represent the Hollow Knight himself? Kind of yes to both. My theory is that this leitmotif is used to represent not just the literal Hollow Knight, but the vessels, beings created by the Pale King and filled with void in his attempts to create a pure vessel that could contain the radiance that had been spreading its infection all across Hallownest. Our hero, called the Knight officially, is one of these vessels, as is the Hollow Knight who was decided to be pure enough to successfully contain the Radiance. Well, look how that turned out. Besides the intro cutscene, the Hollow Knight leitmotif is used a couple times throughout the environment music, which I attribute to us following around the main character through these environments. This reasoning is a little shaky, admittedly, so let's check out some much stronger evidence for my vessel theory. The broken vessel is a corpse of one of these vessels found in the ancient basin. Coming upon it, it's reanimated by the infection to try and defeat the knight, foreshadowing the fight with the Hollow Knight at the end of the game. 
The Broken Vessels theme is really interesting because the opening motif from the Hollow Knight theme is straightened out into a marching quarter note rhythm and used as a bassline ostinato throughout the track. When the melody comes in, we get the full Vessel leitmotif only with the first phrase squished together to fit an extra leading tone resolution to the tonic at the end. Basically the same melody, the same pedaled tonic minor chord, and a similar enough instrumentation, you can see a massive difference in emotional tone between this theme and the original. The extremely low register of the piece as a whole, the plodding staccato bass line, and the rhythmic triplet accompaniment reminiscent of Gustav Holt's Mars from the planets, all add up to this feeling of grim resignation as the knight gears up to battle one of his fallen brethren. The dream version of this boss even has his name changed from Broken Vessel to Lost Kin. I think the addition of the leading tone resolution to the tonic in this melody lends to this more straightforward, serious attitude, as opposed to the ethereal sound of the originals sitting on the second of the key at this point in the melody. There's another boss theme that makes use of these leitmotifs, but achieves a very different kind of effect. The False Knight theme gives us the kind of bombastic and intense music you'd expect from a typical boss encounter, with time signature shifts, frequent modulations, and a powerful up-tempo rolling bass line underpinning the whole thing. It's also one of the most faithful adaptations of the original Hollow Knight theme you can find in the soundtrack, using the first three phrases of the melody as well as the accompaniment figure we outlined earlier. The accompaniment pattern is squished together from 4 bars of a slow 3-4 to 2 bars of a quick 6-8, and modified with a flat 2nd scale degree replacing the 2nd in the final bar, completely changing the original's pensive tone into the relentless high-energy attitude that you'd want to accompany an exciting boss battle. This figure keeps churning underneath as a somber string melody floats over top, taking the Hollow Knight theme, stretching each phrase out over four bars rather than two, and removing all excess notes and rhythms to make it as simple as possible to contrast the frenzied bass part happening below. If you're deep in the Hollow Knight lore, you might be thinking, the False Knight isn't a vessel, your theory is trash! And you'd be right. But the False Knight theme doesn't just play over the False Knight boss fight, but one other boss fight as well, the Watcher Knights. Neither of these bosses are vessels, but they're both empty suits of armor being manipulated by a separate party, a wimpy grub and these infected flies respectively. This makes them quite literally Hollow Knights. This doesn't make them vessels in the official sense of the word, but so far all of these characters are Hollow Knights in the general sense, so the name of the original theme still works. Although this might just be Christopher Larkin being cheeky with his leitmotifs. The final boss theme that we see make use of the Hollow Knight motif should come as no surprise. The sealed vessel theme, scoring the battle with the Hollow Knight himself. The music in this fight is a truly masterful conclusion to the Hollow Knight story, combining the bombastic thrill and intensity of battle with a poignant reflection. Much like the False Knight theme, the Hollow Knight motif is stretched out into long and slow phrases to contrast an accompanying frenzied string part. This two-part 16th note line jaggedly outlines a harmonic minor sound on our tonic E minor chord. However, instead of sounding like your typical crazy boss fight theme, this piece also retains a serious quality reminiscent of the Broken Vessel theme we heard before. I attribute this to the doubling of the melody in the bass part. Even with the swirling, hectic string runs going on around it, grounding the music with these long, slow bass notes playing this solemn melody colors the whole piece with this kind of grave tone. I 
love that Larkin used these motifs in such a simple or pure form like this. On their own, they're pretty much as devoid of personality as a melody can be. This reflects the Hollow Knight's purity as a vessel, being chosen to contain the radiance for being completely empty. In the Pale King's own words, no mind to think, no will to break, no voice to cry suffering. And this brings us to the second phase of the fight. After a certain point, the Hollow Knight begins to stab himself with his nail, and the music completely shifts. The chaotic string runs of the first phrase are replaced with these slow string chords, taking the first three notes of the Hollow Knight motif and cutting them off with a return to the tonic, refusing to let the full melody play out. This, combined with the uneven 11-bar length of the loop, makes it feel like the melody is trapped in place, playing out a cycle that is destined to repeat itself. Besides the huge tonal shift from the previous section, some players' heads may be turned due to recognizing this theme. The music, as well as the Pale King's quote from earlier, comes from an optional section of the game named the Birthplace Sequence. Traveling down to the bottom of the abyss and finding the Hollow Knight's birthplace triggers a flashback sequence involving the player climbing back up out of the abyss to the Pale King's now famous quote, arriving at the top just in time to see the Pale King and a young Hollow Knight leave the abyss together. The music scoring this section is the same as the second phase of the titular boss fight's theme, albeit structured a little differently. Where the birthplace sequence starts with a choir singing a harmonized version of this stuck-in-place melody, adding an upper string line as the knight reaches a certain point in his ascent, the Hollow Knight boss version starts with a string trio arrangement of the same theme, then slowly adds layers as you whittle down his health, including the same upper string part and choral pads we heard in the birthplace sequence. The same theme appears again in The Path of Pain, the notoriously difficult platforming segment in the White Palace. The theme evolves in the exact same way as it does in the boss theme as you progress through the challenge, leading up to another flashback sequence where we see the Pale King actually show his creation a little bit of affection. Okay, so when doing research for this video, I came across a debate as to whether the Hollow Knight stabs himself at this point in the fight to try and damage the infection inside of him, thereby helping the player defeat him, or if he was opening up parts of his body for more infection to spill out, thereby making himself stronger. The use of the birthplace and path of pain music here makes me think the correct answer is the former. Calling back to music used in multiple situations is meant to tie these situations together, and having this theme come in during both of the Hollow Knight's flashback sequences found in the game make it feel like the Hollow Knight is remembering his past at this point in the battle, maybe even remembering his fondness for the Pale King, and his duty to protect Hollow Nest. This is the whole reason why the Hollow Knight failed to contain the Radiance in the first place. His remembering the events of his past and acting according to it proves that he does not, in fact, have no mind to think or no will to break. The impurity of the Hollow Knight is what kept him from being the perfect vessel, as much as the Pale King liked to think that he was. So him stabbing himself here must be his final attempt to help the player stave off the infection for good. Regardless of the narrative implications, the drastic change of tone in the music creates an effect not unlike that found in Gwyn's theme from Dark Souls. Contrasting the action on screen with a somber musical accompaniment gives the player the sense that there's more to this tragic character than just a challenge to be overcome, even if the details of this tragic backstory aren't clear. After defeating the Hollow Knight, the final cutscene is scored differently depending on which ending you get. The easiest ending, titled The Hollow Knight, entails the player character taking the Hollow Knight's place as a vessel to contain the infection. 
scored by taking the initial phrase of our Hollow Knight motif and building it up to climax on our tonic minor chord. The second ending, Sealed Siblings, plays out basically the same with the addition of Hornet aiding in the fight and being sealed into the Black Egg Temple along with the player, with the addition of the Pale King's theme that we discussed in my last video playing out over the final tonic minor chord to drive home Hornet's sacrifice. The game's true ending, Dream No More, involves diving inside the Hollow Knight's mind and defeating the source of the infection itself as a secret second final boss, and has my favorite music of the three. We get a longer cutscene showing the void draining from the Hollow Knight's chamber, scored with the exact same musical cue that accompanied the game's intro cinematic. Hornet wakes up to see the knight's shattered helmet on the ground, and the Pale King's theme comes in alongside the main Hollow Knight theme, weaved together as counterlines. This moves off into a scene of the siblings in the abyss, remnants of failed vessel experiments, all disappearing as the music moves on to the birthplace or Hollow Knight Phase 2 theme. Only this time, the melody continues past the first four notes, resolving to the tonic and providing the vessels, and by extension the Hollow Knight himself, with some long-awaited closure. Well, I hope you enjoyed the series on Hollow Knight. I really enjoyed working on it because a lot of these musical cues went totally over my head when I first played the game, and getting the chance to explore the soundtrack seriously revealed a lot more depth than I had initially thought was there. As always, if you'd like to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon here, follow me on Twitter here, or consider buying a t-shirt here. We're kind of running out, so this might be the last time I plug the shirts, so if you're on the fence, go get one. Thanks so much for sticking with me through this series, and I hope to see you all next time. Thank you.